The Ninja Assassin is the latest offering from Atomos and can be seen as the lighter version of the Atomos Shogun. It features up to 4K recording alongside a 7-inch 1920x1080 monitor, plus a whole host of other filmmaking tools as well. All this in a lightweight and fairly compact unit. It's been designed and is the perfect companion for the DSLR crowd or any type of HDMI-based camera. We're going to take a look at the touchscreen user interface options for recording, and starting with the top row, you'll find the video input menu, which gives you options for source input, which in this case is 4K UHD from a Panasonic GH4, the record trigger option, which can be over HDMI from your camera, the record status of the assassin, and the video output resolution. Within this menu, you'll find options for accurately setting up your time lapse, you're also able to use the file naming menu to sync your assassin with another film unit or slate with settings for scene, take and shot. And the last menu is for setting up your timecode. And moving along, we come to our recording quality menu where you'll see that we have codecs for Apple ProRes and Avid DNxHR and the recording times associated depending on the side of your hard drive. You're able to change the codecs and the quality within the codecs, uh, in this example, 422LT and HQ and you also get a recording readout for the codec that you're using in the right hand side. The next menu along the top there is for the file name, scene, shot and take and you're able to amend those within that menu but this also has a secondary function when used with the playback function as well. So then when playing back your footage from within this screen if you then were to go into that menu you'll see a list of all the footage that's been taken on the hard drive and you're able to select and then play back a shot from within that list or export the data as an XML. And of course, when you exit from that, you're able to start playing from the point where you went into the menu. And so lastly, at the top here, we have the record time remaining function, which shows you at a glance what media you have installed. You're able to then format the media from this menu, as well as rename the device or export all the data as an XML. And you have also a power readout at the top here, which shows you the remaining battery time and any hardware you have connected for continuous power. At the bottom left of the interface, you'll find the audio control panel. And within this menu, you're able to see and monitor the up to eight channels of digital audio that is possible over HDMI, as well as the analog stereo input for connecting a microphone directly to the unit. The channels are armed for recording by selecting the rec buttons, which will turn red to indicate that you are recording to the channel selected. You are able to monitor stereo channels for each of the inputs by selecting the headphone icon next to the level indicators. For recording a mono source, such as a lavalier or shotgun microphone, you only need to arm the left channel of the analog input and monitor this channel by ensuring the headphone icon is highlighted. The audio options menu gives you access to the controls for the analog gain on the left and right analog input channel with up to 12 decibels of boost the audio delay function in frames, and you're also able to select your audio monitoring to all eight channels vertically, or just your analog input channels horizontally. And so on to the waveform and monitor assist functions. First up, we have the Luma Parade. Then we have an RGB Parade. We have a Vector Scope and the Vector Scope Zoom, all of which appear onto the user interface. Within this section, you're able to change the size of how this is displayed, either full screen or centered, and we have transparency and brightness sliders to compare this against your footage. And so now onto the monitor assist menu, we've got some of the coolest features on the Atomos Ninja Assassin, starting with focus peaking. And this shows you very easily what is and isn't in focus by giving you a red outline of the sharpest areas of the image. We have a couple of different modes within this. We have a black and white only mode, which removes all the color from the image other than the focus peaking. So it's very easy to see. And we also have the outline mode, which is a very good way of looking at it in three dimensions. As you can see, as I move through the focus here, it gives you a very good readout of the areas that are, are in focus. To nail this more accurately, you can use the one-to-one -one pixel readout mode, uh, which gives you a zoomed in look at the areas of focus, or even a two-to-one, and you're able to move the screen around or use the focus zoom box. You're able to change the color of the focus peaking to give you an easier indication depending on the colors within your scene. 
Next up, we have our exposure tools and the classic zebra and the associated threshold level, which is obviously really good for seeing whether or not your highlights are blown out as well as all the different levels of exposure. We also have a false color histogram, which is really good for nailing things like skin tones. And also we have a blue only exposure, which is good for monitoring noise. There's also a couple of very helpful things such as the crop marks, uh, whether or not you'll be using lines into your final production. You've got uh, various different modes of those uh, so you're able to monitor while shooting. You also have your TV safety lines, which is also very good for setting up titles and things like that. And last but not least, we have a anamorphic de-squeeze, which gives you pretty much every mode that caters for every anamorphic lens that's on the market, including 2 times 1.5, 1.33. And now we come on to the display options for the Atomos Assassin. And here it is very important if you're working with log footage, if you're shooting in log, to be able to monitor using LUTs. Uh, here you're able to select the monitor LUT button and view the LUT in split screen or full screen or obviously no LUT at all. And you're able to save eight different LUTs to any of the eight predefined locations on the menu here. This is very easy to do and also allows you to see what your footage will look like when graded. It's very simple to select the LUTs. You can either drag them straight to your hard disk or use some of the LUTs that are pre-built into the Atomos Assassin. A couple of last things to note, you're able to completely minimize the Assassin's display by simply tapping on it. So you can remove the top layer of options and also the bottom layer. Tapping it once more will bring them all back. And lastly, within the recording and playback menu, you have the cut and tag functions, which are super helpful because it allows you to mark in and out points whilst you're recording or whilst you're playing back and put markers on your footage to let you know during the edit whether it's overexposed, which the best take was and other things like that. And these can all be exported as XMLs for import into your NLE. And so that is the Atomos Ninja Assassin. And to play out, we're just going to use some example footage that we've taken just to give you an example of some of the color that can be achieved from a GH4 using the log profile and filmed in ProRes 422HQ. For more information or to purchase your Ninja Assassin, please visit eastwoodsoundandvision.com. Music